Hello, I'm storyteller Tim Lowry, and I'm telling a story every day, at least every school day, during the month of May, to get you through to the end of the school year. I'm cheering you on. Uh, I just returned recently from a trip to Tennessee to tell stories to uh, boys and girls in Knoxville, Tennessee, at Christenberry Elementary School. I spend a lot of my time in the car traveling all over the country, and I suppose that's very appropriate because it was on a car trip that I decided to become a storyteller. I was a school teacher for five years, and though I consider the school teaching profession a very noble and worthy cause, it just wasn't exactly what I wanted to do. So I decided that I would take a trip to visit cousins in Atlanta because when I go on a long drive, I can think. And I wanted to think about what I was going to do if I was going to make a change and not be a school teacher anymore. On my way home from Atlanta, I was driving on the interstate. You know, the interstate is so boring. There's nothing to look at. So I decided I'd turn off on a country road and I would drive on a country road where I could see some stuff. So I turned off on this country road in South Carolina and I did see some stuff. I saw a cow and a cow and a cow and a camel. Camel? I thought, surely I didn't just see a camel standing by the side of the road. So I drove on a little ways, and I found a little parking lot at a country church. I turned around in the parking lot, and I came back. And sure enough, standing there behind some barbed wire was a camel just chewing, like, <coughs> looking at me as if to say, <coughs> so? And that's when I saw it. There was a sign on the side of the road that said, O'Kane's Wild Animal Park with a big arrow pointing up a gravel driveway. And I thought, ooh, I've got to see this. So I turned up the gravel driveway and uh, came to a house, and there was an extra parking area next to the house. And I, just as I parked my car, this guy came riding over on a riding lawnmower, and he looked at me, and I would rolled my window down. He looked at me, and he said, you want to see my zoo? I said, well, I saw your camel sit standing by the side of the road. He said, yep, I've got a whole zoo and I'll show it to you. It cost you $4. Well, I took $4 out of my wallet and got out of the car, locked it up, handed him the money. And he said, all right, I'm going to give you a tour of my zoo. Just climb on the back of this riding lawnmower and hitch to the back of the riding lawnmower. He had a, a little trailer and it was filled with cabbages and lettuces and carrots and stuff he was going to feed his animals in the zoo. He said, just climb on the back of this riding lawnmower with me and I'll give you a driving tour of my zoo. So he started up his lawnmower and away we went, Brrr, driving around. He drove out to a big field there were little mounds of dirt everywhere in this big field. And he parked and he said, now just watch. So I'm watching. And all of a sudden, a prairie dog pops up out of a hole from one of those little dirt mounds in the field. And another prairie dog pops up in another spot. Pretty soon I see prairie dogs popping up all over the place. And I said, prairie dogs in South Carolina? That, that's like a thing they have out west. How did you get a whole prairie dog town? He said, son... Did you go to school? I said, yeah, I went to school. He said, you don't know very much. He said, you get a boy prairie dog and a girl prairie dog. You dig a hole, throw them in there, and in spring, prairie dog town. You got prairie dogs everywhere. He said, that's how I got all these prairie dogs. I said, wow, look at that. Then we got on the riding mower again. We drove over to this great big fence. He said, I'll let you feed my ostrich. And he gave me a carrot out of that trailer he was pulling, big, long, orange carrot. And he said, just reach up high to the top of the fence and the ostrich will put its head right over the fence and come down and take the carrot right out of your hand. You would think that an ostrich would swallow a carrot like long ways down its skinny neck. Mm -mm. I'm telling you, it swallowed that thing sideways. It looked like it had swallowed a big pencil. You could see it go all the way down its neck. Then we got on the riding mower again, and he drove over to this little barn. You might have a barn like this in your backyard. Uh, not a big barn, just a, like a shed. You keep your lawnmower and your bicycles and stuff in. And he jumps off the riding mower, and he starts working a combination lock hanging on a hasp on the front of this little barn. And he says, this here is my snake house. Just sounded nasty. Pretty much was. He opened that thing up. I thought, this won't be too bad. It'll just be like some fish tanks with some snakes in it like they have at the, at the pet store. Uh-uh. No, no, no. He had it all done up like a jungle room with a little water fountain in one end and 
big old snakes just crawling around in there. I said, I'm not going in there. He said, they won't hurt you. I said, I know, because I'm not going in there. <laughs> he said, well, now, if you're not going to see the snakes, he said, I won't make you. I won't make you if you're afraid. He said, but after we feed the camel, you have to see the alligators. So we go by and we feed the camel a carrot or two. And then we come to this pond. It's surrounded by by a great big fence and he turns off the lawnmower and he gets off and I get off behind him and he undoes this big chain and opens up these gates and he says in this pond I've got 10 alligators come on I'll walk you around the pond so we're walking around the pond inside this fence and I start counting alligators I see a couple laying on the opposite bank I see two or three floating in the water and I start counting one two three four five six seven eight nine I count backward Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I said, I thought you said you had 10 alligators. He said, I do, I do. He said, but I got one that's already had babies. She's dug a hole back in the bank and uh, she's back in that hole with her babies. And then he says to me, big and grand, if you want to see a real mama alligator with her babies, all you have to do is grab a hold of this tree branch right here and kind of swing down and look back in this hole in the bank and you'll see her. She'll come crawling out with the babies riding on her back. But when she comes out, uh, you better come up the bank pretty fast because um, she doesn't like anybody messing with her babies. I did it. It was like I was outside of my body watching myself do something stupid. I grabbed a hold of the tree branch and I swung down. Sure enough, Big old alligator, about eight feet long, comes crawling out. She's got little baby gators riding on her back. She's going, Rrr. I scrambled back up that bank really fast. We went out, locked the gate back. I said, I think I just got my $4 worth. Thank you very much. He took me back to my car. On the way back to the car, he showed me a family of wallabies. They're the, the shorter little kangaroos. He had a family of raccoons. He had llamas and burros, all kinds of animals. It was all really done quite nicely as well. Very nice. So we got back to my car and I thanked him for a tour around his zoo. And I said, how in the world did you get all of these exotic animals out on this country road in rural South Carolina? And he looked at me and he said, son, I'm going to tell you something. He said, when I was a young man like you, he said, when I finished high school and I was ready to go off to college, I wanted to be a zookeeper. And my daddy said, there ain't no money in that. You're not going to study zoology. You're going to work in construction just like I did. And I wasn't brave enough to tell my daddy that that's not what I really wanted to do. So I never went to college. I worked in construction just like my dad. And I inherited his business. And I worked in construction for 30 years. And I hated it. But I saved all my money. And when I retired, I bought myself a zoo. And then he looks me dead in the eye and he says, don't wait 30 years to do what you really want to do. So you know what? I went home, went to visit the principal at my school and said, I love children. I love young people. I love telling stories, and I love that even more than teaching school. Telling stories is what I really want to do. And I quit my job and became a professional storyteller. And I have been a storyteller for 22 years. I would say that's the end of that, but I'm still going. I hope to meet you someday and tell you stories live and in person. And until then, I think I'll just tell stories <laughs> at the zoo. <laughs>